Hey guys, let's talk position. Quite simply put, we consider three things with positioning. Four, if you want to be technical. Number one is always safety. It's the first thing we consider in everything we do while we're driving. Not just the safety of you, but the safety of those you may be affecting. We do this by protecting what we call a safety bubble Wi-Fi around disabled. our vehicle. Helpful. Safety bubble around our vehicle. We would like to be We'd like this area to be as large as possible, i.e. from curb to curb. That would put you right in the middle of the road between the two opposing sets of traffic. It's not always going to be safe. In fact, most of the time, it's something you're going to be avoiding. However, we can position closer to the centre line in order to position away from something on the curb. Could we do that, though, if we've got more danger coming from the right-hand side, which is going to be just as close as with the danger on the curb? Probably not, so we can split the difference. The idea is to keep the maximum space possible. And if you can't get the biggest space you can, you would want, consider dropping the speed. We'll talk about that more in the speed video. Next one. Number two, stability or intention. This is where you look at the positioning to show your intention without compromising the stability of the vehicle, i.e. avoiding potholes, gravel and other road debris. Coming on to three, which is view. We can use our position to get a better view of the road ahead and what is coming up next, as long as it doesn't compromise safety or stability. Bear in mind, when you're positioning for a view, this could throw off the intention, so people may not understand what you're intending to do next. Okay, so let's start by talking safety bubble. When we're talking about safety bubble, we're generally talking about at least two seconds in front of us, at least a metre to each side, and at least two seconds behind us. Now, we don't actually control the space behind us, so if the vehicle behind ends up following too close, then what we can actually do is, rather than changing the size of our bubble, is we can move our place within it. So let's say they're about a second behind us, rather than two seconds away. What we'll do is we'll take the one second that we've lost from behind and move it to the front of us, leaving us three seconds in front, one second behind, and therefore if something were to happen, you've got more space to deal with it. This helps limit the risk of being rear-ended. It's also worth mentioning that these distances will need to change with the weather and road conditions. So for good road conditions, two seconds is great. However, when it starts to rain or the road conditions aren't as good, we'd need to consider doubling that distance up to four seconds. If we're talking about snow and ice, it could be up to 10 times our usual amount. We should also consider that the curb itself is not our hazard, but something on the curb certainly would be. So we don't have to be a metre away from the curb itself, but if there's someone walking along the path within a metre to the road, it may be that we need to move away from that danger. Again, it's all circumstantial. If you've got the space, use it. If you haven't, consider dropping your speed. Consider the fact that other people using the road will also have their own safety bubble. These will be other cars, motorcyclists, and potentially even your cyclists as well. Consider that cyclists may need extra space because they are considered more vulnerable, just like motorcycles. When we talk about the distances to the side of us, we talk about a metre because generally the door's width will be about a metre, so as we're passing parked cars, we'll be safe. If someone were to step out, the average stride is just under one metre, which means they'd need to take at least two steps into the road before they actually reach your path. Ultimately, we want this area to be as large as possible. So if you can have the space and move away from danger, then we should be doing so. To show off how this works, we're going to need a special vehicle. Okay guys, I'd like to start with a clip. It's just of a rider that I came across as I was filming for this video. And what I want you to take away is the distances between the area available 
the rider and the hazards. So you're going to see shortly what I mean by this. And what I want to really show off here is this idea of the safety bubble. We can also talk about limit points, but that's going to be something we're going to talk about in the next video when we're talking about speed. But both of these would have come together in this instance. So let's take another look at that from the beginning. Starting with where I am on the road as I approach the junction. As you can see, we've got a Jaguar that's just come into the junction and a set of pedestrians on the right as well as on the left. So what I'm trying to do is put an equal amount of space between me and the pedestrians on the left, as well as the closest hazard on my right, which happens to be the car that's just entered the road. Now, if you're watching really closely, you would have seen them slightly cut the corner, only by about three foot or so, but this is already a clue as to how we might deal with this driver. Anyway, as I approach the junction, I've slowed, I'm prepared to stop if the pedestrians step out. Once I'm satisfied the junction is clear, I follow the rider out, keeping at least two seconds behind them. As I start coming down the road, you can see the road bends around to the right, and there is also a couple of junctions on the right, so I'm keeping a relatively central position within my lane. Coming further down the road, you can see that the rider in front is quite far to the left of the lane, and we have the oncoming bin lorry. The oncoming bin lorry being a large vehicle means it's going to be moving a lot of air around it, so I've kept, again, to the centre of the lane. I can see it's clear afterwards, so as soon as I'm clear of the bin lorry, I'm moving out towards the centre line. At this point, you can see the rider in front puts their indicator on to turn left. Now, they are still positioned very close to the kerb, and this is where all the problems come from. Their bike may be in the road and close to the kerb, but them as a rider leaning over are actually over the kerb. So the pedestrian walking along the kerb they're going to be very close to. As I say, in this instance, it wasn't a problem. The rider actually dealt with it quite well, and as we can see, they are an L-plate rider. However, it's certainly something we can break down and think about for ourselves. And this doesn't change between bikes and cars. We can favour the kerb, we can favour the middle, and we can favour the right-hand side of our lane. We can also use the off-side of the road to position away from danger where necessary but it still comes back to those three main factors, safety, stability, and view. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video on uh, positioning. It was good fun to make. Um, it was quite difficult to convey the message through this uh, medium. You know, it's, it's not easy to put everything into a video. These We are simply discussing the basics in this series. Um, if you want to learn more, look for your local IAM group, um, Institute of Advanced Motorists, uh, as this is the, the technique they will use, or you can buy um, Roadcraft, which is a police driver's handbook, really, really good book. Talks through this in a lot more detail, um, and, and everything in a lot more detail. And the first chapter is very, very useful, so have a little look at that. But the main takeaways from this video on positioning, you know, we're talking about safety bubble and remember that's going to be affected by things like road and weather conditions. When it's raining, stopping distances increase and so two seconds would need to be more like four seconds. If the speed's higher, think about reaction times, maybe increase it to three seconds, things like motorway. Um, but the whole idea is to protect yourself and, and maximise safety. So move away from danger where it's possible to. Don't be afraid to use the other side of the road. It is there for a reason. You know, if you're passing a cyclist, and I see this way too often, people passing like that. You've got the entire road. Get wide, get past, and then come back. Clear them. Think about their safety bubble too. How would you like it if the roles were reversed? However, I'm not going to go on about that because it's the end of the video. So, it's all the YouTube time stuff. Comment, like, subscribe, new video, see you then. That was way too upbeat. Catch you next time.